So there's a couple more stickers added to the collection. And I got these a while ago, but um, it's been kind of crappy and cold and wet, so I haven't had a chance to put them on. Um, Adams weathered the winter, so now we added Tom's and Randy Rich's uh, to the truck. And it's about very nice out today, actually. Probably mid to lower 60s, and uh, almost melted all the snow, pretty much. I have just that little bit left, and then a little bit over there, and then we're done with the snow. It's all bye-bye. I don't want to see it again. Hello and welcome back to the shop. Um, I guess you've noticed that the weekly videos have been a bit lacking. Um, and that's just because it's starting to get actually get really nice out, so I'm getting busier at work. And I also trying to take care of a ton of projects I have to do um, outside the house. So trying to fit everything into a kind of a condensed schedule and uh, you know still be in the shop where I can. So I'm still trying to do a weekly video. Uh, it's just that some days or some weeks it's it's just impossible to do. So just bear with me on that. Um, I mean, anyway, I got a ton of projects going. As, as you can see, um, actually these benches are probably the cleanest you've ever seen them. I did a little bit of organizing. Painted this. It's actually still wet. And back there is the uh, collet rack that I had made, and that's currently drying. And I still have to make the holders for the. Um, Quick change tool posts, and a lot of you guys had a, a bunch of good suggestions for it. And um, I know more than one person had suggested it, but uh, Herb Blair's name comes to mind. And he said just use a piece of aluminum angle cut to the dovetail of the uh, tool holder. And that's what I'm going to do once that starts drying. Uh, and um, before we actually get into the to the, the this video. Um, I just wanted to point out one thing that I had pointed out before. But uh, some of you guys may ha may know or may have watched uh, this person out there called James Green, Eagle Dust Off 37. Um, he has a YouTube channel out there, and he is a uh, medically retired vet. And um, he has a, a small lathe in a in a very small, uh, I believe it's a mini mill. And he does YouTube videos and kind of in his own shop, just like us. Um, and he does it, you know, to to tell people around town, other vets, and also just to keep himself busy. Um, well, his equipment's pretty much had it, and he has a GoFundMe uh, campaign out to help him buy some new equipment. So um, I urge you guys to go check out his channel, which I'll put right here, and then there's a link below. And also go check out his GoFundMe campaign. And uh, instead of buying a coffee this week, why don't you uh, just send James five, ten bucks if you can? and uh, help him out to get some, some new machinery. Uh, he explains everything more than I could in any of the videos, so um, just give it a check. So as it, also, I want to let you guys know we're going to be bringing back the uh, beginner videos. So um, this month's beginner videos, we're going to bring the threading video back from uh, last month. So uh, all about external threading, we'll do some left and right hand threads, some Acme threading. We'll look at different um, different thread forms. We'll we'll cut we'll cut actually cut the Acme thread, cut the left and right hand threads, show how to make um, the single point tool for regular 60 degree thread, the Acme thread, and we'll go through all about external threading. The only thing that we won't get into that is actual physical um, the actual thread measurement uh, using thread wires and things like that. That'll be a separate video down the road. So um, look in the comments and if you want to see that video, give that a thumbs up. Uh, the other choice will be uh, using the steady and follow arrest on the legs. Um, so I know a lot of people have seen people use steady rests. Uh, some people have shown how to set them up, some people haven't. Um, so we can show that on my lathe and also in, in what you would actually use it for, what it's used for, when you can use it, when you can't use it. Um, and then also a follow arrest, which you don't very often see, and that's to turn very, very small diameter stuff, and it's kind of a backing support for it, so it doesn't flex away from the tool bit. And we'll show how to set that up, and I uh, run it on the lathe. So if you guys want to see that video, give that comment down there a thumbs up. So as far as this video goes, um, as the title suggests, we're making tap wrenches. And um, this is all part of Keith Fender's uh, toolbox giveaway. Now, some of you may may or may not know that Brad over at Basement Machine Shop uh, got a bunch of YouTube, uh, and people had YouTube machining videos, machinist uh, channels, 
They contact a bunch of us and put it, put us all together to make some tools for uh, Keith Fender's box. And what it's going to be, what it is, is some of us will make some parts and we'll farm out the stuff that we can't do to other people and uh, put plans and everything together. So I decided to make the um, tap and die holders. Now they can be done completely without a mill. Um, even these versions that we're going to make can be done completely without a mill. But I'm going to send them out to somebody with a mill to cut the slots in them. And the two kind of versions I'm talking about are these here, and we'll be making uh, these, uh, two different versions. Now, down the road, uh, one of my other videos will be actually making just a die holder, and um, I want to make a complicated tap wrench, which, will, which would um, probably include more of the, the, the guys in the, um, the group doing the, the builds for the toolbox giveaway. And I kind of want to make something like Starrett's here, which has a bunch of different parts to it. So I figure out how to do this. I, I'm pretty sure I have a way of doing it. I just got to actually make time to do it. And um, I can do the handles and the knurling and then send this off to somebody else to do the V, um, cut, it, cut the flat in the middle, do the notch in the middle, and do the hardened pin. Um, so I got to make up some plans for this and uh, actually try it out and make it, which will probably be another video. So, in the meantime, let's just pop down on the bench. We're going to take a quick peek at some different types of tap wrenches and uh, what differentiates those from the ones that we're going to make. Okay, so first let's uh, talk about some styles of tap wrenches. Um, first, this good old T-handle tap wrench. Um, I don't particularly like these. I do carry one uh, in my van for work. Uh, it has a... Uh, a quarter 20 tap in there, uh, spiral tap, and those are for um, tapping the hinge uh, bolt holes for walking cooler doors because they come as blanks. You have to tap them. Um, otherwise, I don't particularly use these in the shop. Uh, the only good thing about them is you can make tap guides really easy just by using this outside diameter and making a, a sleeve of some sort. Um, I have some cheapos that I do like to use. This is a Craftsman one, you know, this little jaw style. I don't particularly like that one, it's very bulky. Um, but this little one right over here, um, this one I do like. Uh, it, it's light and, it, you know, it, it does uh, um, a decent size. It is a cheapo, it's made in India, but um, it works and I do like it. And the good thing is, is it clears the ways of the lathe. Then you have, you know, your fancy styles here are your um, your Starrett's uh, 91 A, B, and C, and they all do, I think this does up to 5 eighths, up to half inch, and up to quarter inch, I believe is what these are. And uh, you can see that rod in there, and that's all spring-loaded, and, you know, it traps the tap and everything in there. The only problem with these, as I've heard, is um, you see the hole here for wrenching them down. You don't want to wrench them down. I've actually heard of these little tabs inside splitting and breaking off. Um, so, and these, these are not cheap and they're very heavy and I do like them. Uh, most useful size for me is probably this one here that does up to half inch. Um, and this one is very good for the smaller taps. You get a better feel on it than even though this can take the smaller taps. Um, you have more of a tendency of over tweaking them and breaking them with this than with this little guy here. So the ones that we're going to be making, we're going to be making two different ones. And um, here's one that I've already made. And it's this style here. And uh, the slot hasn't been milled in it yet. Um, that's going to be done more than likely by one of the guys on the, um, the What's in Your Box uh, tool build. Um, we're going to be making this one. This is just out of uh, uh, square, square stock. Uh, this is uh, 1045, I believe. But you can use 1018 or you know, whatever alloy you got floating around, half inch square stock. And uh, we're going to be making uh, this style here. Now this one I made in high school. So this is uh, 16 years old, roughly. I made it as a freshman in high school. And um, you can see there's a, just unscrew them here. And it, it's nice because um, it doesn't require a tool like this one here. And you know, I had a you know, it was a project that showed us how to do tapers and measurements and knurling and everything else like that. And it's just two the jaws are just two pieces of 1018. Now, this thing is 16 years old, and I do use it, and um, you know, it's not boogered up at all. 
really. I mean, it's got a little slight bit of wear on there, but nothing that'll, um, you know, uh, make it not hold the tap. And the best thing about this is if you um, completely trash these jaws, you just cut two new pieces, reuse the handles, call it a day. Same thing with this one here. You can just, uh, you know, freshen up that little V that you got in there and they're good to go. So this is 16 years on uh, 1018, which is relatively um, softer stuff and we're still going strong. So, and here's our version of that that we're gonna be making. So I'm gonna show you how to make um, this one here and this one here. And then maybe I'm gonna try to design something along the lines of one of these starrets and see if I can build something along this line or um, or this one here. You can let me zoom in here. Uh, this actually is, this is an English one, uh, more and right. And you can see it has the, that kind of teardrop notch like the starrets do. But instead of having a spring-loaded plunger, it's just a screw that tightens right up against the, the, uh, the point of the tap. Um, maybe we'll make something like this. Uh, I, I really, I really want to kind of challenge myself and, and see if I can make this. And it is a three-piece deal. So you have uh, this knurled screw here that hits this little plunger that's spring-loaded. And it has a, um, a slot milled in, in there and there's a pin to hold this from shooting out. Um, that isn't actually a necessity, but you know, it's nice to unscrew it and not have everything go flying off at you. So um, down the road, this may be an option, but in the meantime, let's set up to make this. I'm gonna do this one first and then we'll do this one. Okay, so first things first, uh, we're obviously going to be using a four jaw for this because we have some square stock. Um, this is just half inch, uh, 1018. I had cut this to about just a little over seven inches to give me enough to face off both ends. And then what we want to do is we're going to face off an end, we're going to center drill it so that we can extend it out and run it with that center. Because what we're going to do is for a, for a length of about five inches, we're going to turn a round section. So we're going to turn one section of this square perfectly round. So I have these set, jaws set roughly. I'm going to leave out enough so that we can get the indicator on here. And just trying to turn these jaws equally until they tighten down on the outside of this here. So now we'll get the indicator on there, and we can indicate that in. All right, we're right here. Oop. Okay, so we got our indicator here, and we're gonna strip, put this straight vertical, and we're gonna eyeball center of that square, and we're gonna lock our indicator down. And we'll set zero, and we're just gonna turn our chuck until we find the lowest reading. Let me bend you out just a little bit there. You'll see the dial stop and then start to go back. So we want to turn. Right there it stops. So right there we'll set zero and we're going to go 180 degrees to that jaw and we're going to do the same thing and we're going to see how much of a difference there is. So we're five. So we're minus five on this side. So we got to go that way by two and a half. I'm, I'm sorry, we gotta come towards me by two and a half. What am I thinking? It's two and a half. All right, so we're gonna go to the next jaw here, do the same thing. Set zero, go 180 out. So we're plus five, so we gotta go away from us two and a half. Right. And we're just going to keep going around 180 degrees out.
until we read zero on all of them. So it's minus like a little bit. You can see it starts to turn right on zero. Starts to turn right on zero. Starts to turn right on zero. All right, so that's dialed in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna face and we're gonna send a drill. So now we just need to face that off. Center drill that. Okay, so now we have to extend this out for the center. So I'm just going to break this and break this one. Okay, I'm going to retighten these just snug. And we're going to re-indicate. Okay, with, we're pretty much within a half. What we're going to do is for a length of about five inches, we're going to turn this around. Let me grab a scrub. Now it doesn't have to be supremely accurate. So there's five inches. So what we'll do is we'll come down here. I'll put the tool tip right at that mark. And I'm going to put my carriage mount indicator here. this
and we're going to set the dial at zero and that way there I know where to stop. Might have to just turn this a little bit to get in close enough to that. I'm going to have to reset that dial indicator, which is no big deal. Okay, right there. Take 50 for the first cut just to make sure that. Alright, we're doing fine. We're going to take the additional 100. All right, now I was setting up to neural, and I have one of these uh, Williams multi neurals here, and it has uh, coarse, medium, and fine wheel. So I'm going to be using the fine wheel. And um, now I'm not doing this the correct way, where you would reduce this to a certain diameter depending on what the pitch of the wheel is. Uh, I'm just going to jam it in there, and uh, you can generally get it to work and look okay. Um, I know it's not the correct way to do it, but it works for me. Now, the biggest thing with knurling is even though this is a pivoting head, you still want to make sure that this is on center. This is held in a lantern tool post because I don't have a tool holder big enough for this. It's a three-quarter inch shank on the end. Um, so you want to make sure that this is on center with your stock. The reason why is you don't want it catching one wheel more than the other, and uh, you want to even pressure across the wheels. So even though it pivots, it'll give you a little bit of play, but you still want to have it on the, as far... Um, uh, as as good on center as you can get it, and all I did was just measure right into using with a with the scale to the center of the pivot point. And now we also want to make sure they're per perfectly perpendicular with the workpiece. And I put a uh, a machinist square here against the chuck and line this up as best I can. But we'll we're gonna double check it. If we need to adjust it, we can. So we're gonna go to the fine, and we're gonna come over here. And we're just going to touch it, and we're just going to put a little bit of pressure on it, okay? And we're going to rotate our lathe by hand, and it is in back here. And we're going to see the impression that this makes as it comes up. Okay, you can see it there. You can see that I'm tracking on one side more than the other. Not a big thing, so we'll just loosen up the lock here. And I'm heavier on this side, so that means that I have to go that way. So we're going to give it a little, loosen up just a little bit more. Here a little tap. And we'll see if that tracks better. Okay, so you can see we're tracking on both sides there. We're still a little light on the inside, so we can stand to go 
Maybe this light will look a little bit better. There's still a little light on the inside so we can stand to go that way just a little bit more. Okay, now you can see that set there. That looks pretty even all the way around. So now we're gonna start our neural. And uh, we're just gonna go back and forth and back here. I'm gonna pivot forward. And then to go backwards, I'm just gonna reverse the lathe because uh, this doesn't have the, uh, the plunger tumbler reverse. It's a screw that holds this on there. So it's easier for me just to reverse the entire lathe. So we're gonna go back and forth. We're probably gonna neural it about two and three quarters of an inch or so. And uh, we'll skip the boring part and come back when we're done. Okay, so uh, there's what it looks like, not too bad. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this back up in the four jaw and um, I am going to face out this center, center drill mark there. Uh, face that till it's, uh, till it's completely gone. I'll, I'll face off this end here and I will uh, chamfer the edge. So let me move you around and we'll do that. Okay, now since we have a lot of stick out, we got to go gently with this. And we're just going to face out that uh, set and drill mark. Now this is purely cosmetic. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, I just want to do it just to make it look a little bit better. Got to put the bowl gear pin back in. That would help. And there it is. All right, so we're gonna pull this out. I'm gonna clean it up, uh, get all that oil off of there, and then we'll start on the next step, which will be uh, laying out the holes and punching the holes.